We have a couple of guest speakers here, and we figured it would be nice to let uh, the younger brother uh, introduce them. Uh, uh, when I met the, the, the older, two older brother, Christy brothers, I asked them to talk about whether World War II was worse than having to live with Larry or not, but they refused to answer that, so let me turn it over to... Just, just a way of a really quick introduction. Uh, this is my brother, Fernando, we call him Larry. This is my brother Marshall, we call him Bonnie, and I'm Larry, and they call me Bonnie. Um, both of them were born in Bow Valley. Immigrated in 1929. How old were you, Marshall? I was four and a half. Four and a half, and you were? Seven. Seven. And they didn't have English as a second language in 1929. They just threw them in the classrooms, and you did the best you could, and you finished. I was in the first grade for three years learning English. How do you like that? If anybody get in any trouble, well, we use the physical side. Well. Okay. Now, understand, they're really nervous. Time, too, a little bit for them. But Marshall just lost his wife of 50, 55 years, a month ago. So, you know, he, and they will have stories to tell But I want to start this. I want to read something to you from this book by Tom Brokaw. You ever heard of it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the only thing I liked about it is its introduction. It's not much of a book in the book. Well, the only problem with the Brokaw book is it doesn't deal with the average soldier. No, that's right. It deals with important people who served in the military. So, um, uh, Marshall was an infantry D-Day. D-Day. When you see all those videos, you want them. D-Day plus one. What? What? 100, 105 officer. Uh, you Marshall. probably read about, uh, if you've studied any history, you probably have read that uh, they wouldn't wait to get off Hitler up to release the Panzer Division, the, the tanks. And because they couldn't wake Hitler up, when they finally did wake him up, the 105s had already got to, to, to the hedgerow, and, and they just blew the pan. The pants would come across an open cornfield, and the 105s and the other big ones blew them up. But let me read you something first. It says, uh, and this is by Tom Brokaw. It says, at a time in their lives when their days and their nights should have been filled with innocent adventure, love, In the lessons of the workday world, they were fighting in the most primitive conditions possible across the bloody landscape of France, Belgium, Italy, Austria, and the Coral Islands of the Pacific. They answered the call to save the world from the two most powerful, ruthless military machines ever assembled, instruments of conquest in the hands of fascist maniacs. Uh, they faced great odds, a late start. They didn't protest. Uh, let's see. They succeeded on every front. They won the war. They saved the world. They came home to joyous but a short-lived celebrations and immediately began the task of rebuilding their lives in the world they wanted. They married in record numbers. The guys did. Gave birth to another distinctive generation. The baby boomers. A grateful nation made it possible for more of them to attend college and any society ever educated before. They gave the world new science, literature, art, industry, economic strength, unparalleled in the long curve of history. And as they reached the twilight of their adventures and productive lives, they remained, for the most part, exceptionally modest. Uh, they have so many stories to tell, stories that in many cases they have never told before, because in the deep sense, they did not think what they were doing was special, because everybody else was doing it. This book, I hope, will in some small way pay tribute to those men and women who have given us their lives we have today. Really, an American family portrait, an album of the greatest generation. And these two guys are part of it. What you say, Paul? Oh, yes. Probably more important part than most of the people that Brokaw talks about in the book. Right. Because these are the guys that did the dirty work. And I, all I'd ask them to do is sort of reminisce no, about it. No, I'll try to remember. I don't know if I remember. There's, <laughs> certain, there's still certain things I can Excuse me. I can't even talk about. Well, I understand that. Well, as it all started now, he landed the day after I did. Well, may I, I interrupt just a second? The father of the kids, believe me. This is tough for us. I understand. This is tough. Uh, to me, it seems like it was after yesterday. And I am a stutter, so you have to bear with me. 
because I, I, I choke up quite a bit. I see now a lot of my bodies get blown up. And it was rough, it was tough. It was really, really, really tough going. But uh, I started my career, well, uh, go ahead, Marshall, go ahead. Well, that's all right. Go ahead. Well, I started, I started uh, on January the 14th. I was inducted into the service. How old were you, Marshal? I was just uh, 18. Did you want to go? No. I hid. My father came and got me. I didn't want to go. I'm serious. I, I remember he hit, he hit the closet. My father told him he had to go or the state police would come and get him. Am I correct? Right. Then we hit Fort Niagara. They shipped us. Came something North Carolina. We came down on that train for three days in uh, our fatigues. We get about a half hour out of North Carolina, put your old D's on. I said to myself, what the hell is this bastard trying to do? Well, we put the old D's on. What's old D, Marshal? Old D means uh, dress uniform. Dress uniform. And uh, we got off the train, we looked. It was raining cats and dogs. We sank up to our knees in the mud. And we had to hike 20 miles to Camp something. And when we got there, guess what? There only one tent was up. Here we are, we got all our clothes and everything on it. We looked around, what the hell? It took, we were wringing wet. Well, that's where I, that's how I started, say. So on the day I turned 19, that's when we hit North Carolina. I turned 19 that day. But uh, other than that, it was kind of rough. We went to all the different training when we went. I actually, I was a quartermaster. I repaired uh, mess kits, clothing, shoes, and stuff like that that they salvaged out of the field, see. And when we hit the beaches, we went over the side of that ship. You looked around. All you could see were ships. You couldn't even see the water. Uh, that's, that's how close. The amount was, oh, it was wonderful. And all of a sudden, them, them guns off them uh, battleships start firing. Oh my God, man, your head was like this. I mean, boom, boom. It's like the re repercussions, say. Well, anyway, we started off the sides. In the meantime, they're we all lining up. I was in the second wave. The first wave was already starting in. I was in the second wave going in. And I met a guy from my uh, hometown. He was a boatman, or I guess that's what you call him. I don't know. He said, Bonnie, when you see that front go down, jump off the side. I said, why? Well, he said, you'll find out. I found out that as soon as the thing went down, you see the soldiers all dropping. They were firing at them. I went off the side. I went in the water up there. I didn't go in the water. It was all blood. Blood and guts and men floating all over that place, I'm telling you. And uh, we hit, I finally made my way to the beach. See how flat this nose is? That's how my nose was digging into that sand. My rump was, uh, I, <laughs> good thing I didn't have a rump. Believe me. <laughs> and that's when we headed for St. Lowe. That's when he came in the second day. Bobby, uh, he won. How long? Uh, what was it like? Before? Remember I asked you the other day, what did, what did you feel like when you got your notice to go? Remember that I asked you that the other night? Me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, I, 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 you I, listen I, to him. I, I, I talked to Dr. Marshall. Well, I was 20 years old, and uh, uh, we had a pretty large family. Not too well. It was three, uh, three boys and two girls. And uh, at 16, I still wanted to go to school. But, but in those days when Dad says, oh, yeah. well, we didn't call him Dad. We called him Pop. And Pop says, that's it. I've got to have help raise the family. So if I had went back, uh, I'd have been a freshman, but I was just 16 years old, and uh, and I had to go to uh, we're we're from a we're we're not farmers, uh, we're in a farm area of Caledonia. You know, I know whether you people know where Caledonia is. It's down near uh, Leroy, New York, and um, so I said no, pa. I said no, no, pa. I want to go to school. No, he says you can't because we got. Uh, the kids are growing up. So, okay. So, I went to a farm to work, and I was 16. Uh, and, uh, I worked from dawn till dusk, 50 cents a day in my afternoon meal. 50 cents in those days were money. 
So when you got when you got your notice to go? Well, when uh, I, I I got a notice to go uh, around October the fifteenth, and it gave us fifteen days to settle all of our businesses that that, that we have had. See. And uh, I'll never forget this. I will tell you something. Uh, when a soldier gets drafted in the army, they take out a ten thousand dollar accidental death policy on each one. About ten thousand dollars in nineteen forty mm -hmm. would be what? A couple well, hundred thousand today. Probably, you know, close to a couple hundred thousand today. Yeah. And they have to name a beneficiary. I was a beneficiary, but thankfully I didn't collect the money. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank God for that. Both of us had him as a beneficiary. Well, anyway, we went from Caledonia into Geneseo, Geneseo into Mount Morris. Uh, we picked up a, a, a troop train out of uh, Mount Morris and went right straight to Fort, uh, Old Fort Niagara. And we were up there about a week or so. I mean, we had to have uh, a test in uh, physicals and uh, learn how to make the beds, which it, was, uh, it wasn't new to me. And um, and we had a lot of aptitude tests. Uh, I was good in mathematics. I was good in history. And my reflections were pretty fair. But, uh, well, they shipped us here and there. So uh, they put us on a train, and we went to Abilene, Texas, Camp Barkley. And uh, it took three days and four nights to get there. You know, just think, us uh, fellas, uh, well, there must have been uh, four, four or five hundred. Uh, just think, Lena is sitting there for all that time. And uh, of course, we had uh, our kitchen was there, and we had showers. I, I don't know where they got the water, but, but we only it was about five, five, five minutes. And, and you get a train full of two or three hundred people. It's, it's a lot of people. Uh, then, uh, then we started in, in Camp Marshall, Texas, and, and through a, a, a process of the you know, elimination, uh, I landed in the artillery, which I was very glad. Because he died too. Well, anyway, uh, so uh, we, uh, I, uh, I had good training. I had 19 months of good training. Uh, we went to Fort Sill, Oklahoma, for, for artillery school. And, and and then we had to go on uh, on maneuvers. Uh, we went to uh, our, my first maneuver was to, in the desert at Indio, California, near Needles, uh, near uh, Arizona. And I'll tell you, it was hot. Oh, it was hot because we got there. Uh, well, we thought we were going down to the uh, in Africa, you know. And, uh, and then we. Got the uh, then a week a week I finished and went to Camp Barkley and we maneuvered again along a lake terrain like we have a little bit of hills and then all of a sudden we were on the train going to Shreveport Louisiana for swamp maneuver mm -hmm. and, and that was miserable that was miserable it was swamp but I had some good southern fried chicken I'll tell you uh, I had an experience down there um, that. Um, uh, right now, I think it's it's nothing. But actually, uh, we uh, uh, there were uh, two men. I had a half a tent. We'll say, and my brother had a half a tent. So, so we pitched up our tent, and we had to put. It was all wet and all oh, terrible. And we put our raincoats underneath our blankets, and we only had uh, one blanket. So uh, about the middle of the night. Uh, excuse me. Um, I felt something in behind me. I thought I, I, I thought it was a stick. Yes. I said, "Well, gee, I, I took it." And well, every time I moved, that thing moved, moved, moved with me. So in the morning, we were instructed to take our blankets and shake them out. Guess what came out of my blanket? A copperhead. Mm. He was about 18 inches long. But he did not, he did not, all, all he wanted was the warmth of, uh, of my body. And uh, that was one of my, oh, scary, I looked at the holy macro, you know. <laughs> but um, then uh, we went from Louisiana back to Texas. 
And uh, then we didn't, we, we didn't know where we were going. We didn't know whether we had desert maneuvers, swamp maneuvers, we had terrain maneuvers. So we didn't know it. Of course, nobody told us anything. But we found ourselves in, in, in Fort Dix, uh, in New Jersey, in New Jersey. Yeah, New Jersey. Fort Dix, New Jersey. And, uh, That's the implication for me. And we had, um, I, I knew since something was going on, but uh, no, nobody was just, uh, so. Um, uh, well, well uh, anyway, we knew if something was going on. We didn't. We couldn't put our finger on it, but we knew it was just something. And um, uh, uh, we were there, oh, for maybe a couple, of, three, four weeks or something like that, just to you know, to mosey around, relax, you know. And, and then they shipped us to Camp Kilmer. Uh, that's in New York. I, I forgot where it was. Uh, New Jersey. In New, New Jersey. Jersey. Yeah. That's a jumping and, and there, that was a jumping uh, out for you. Uh, there we had to get all of our equipment together. Uh, are you supposed to have two ties? You had one, you had to get another one. If you had two pairs of socks, you needed three to get you another one. So actually we were all put, put pretty well up. Uh, to fix, to fix up with clothing, stuff like that, and then we know, and then um, in uh, in the meantime, my mom and pop had, mom and pop had some friends in Utica, no, Oswego, uh, Frank, Mar uh, Marja. Marja, Sam, and he he met this buddy of his in Batavia, in the, in the Batavia Best Hospital, my dad was the number one, he was with World War One. he was the famous 42nd. Rainbow Division. It, yes, Calvary. But anyway, uh, we we got passes, and the far as I could go was uh, to, to Oswego. And I got, I called my parents up, and then they went down to Oswego, and my dad knew it. And uh, I said, Pa, I said I don't know. I think we're going to leave. Where we're going? I Tell me advice you gave you about volunteering. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, uh, then, uh, then uh, the we the we were just <laughs> sitting around because he was telling his story. He says, "Now, son, look. Well, at first I, I, I want to volunteer." He says, "No, you wait till they draft you." Okay, fine. So I waited, and I'll tell you, when I got drafted, I was never the happiest man in all my life. I was on my own. I was 20 years old. You know, you start thinking about your future, and. Uh, I, oh, I was free. I was free, and uh, and then uh, 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 my uh, uh, my father and I sat down, and, and we sat there, and he told us. He says, "Son, he says, don't volunteer for anything." He says, "Listen to me." He said, "Don't volunteer for nothing." So I said, "Okay, Pop." So it happened that down in Barclay. Uh, uh, the, the first sergeant came out and says, we need 20 chauffeurs, you know, chauffeurs, and we need uh, 20 helpers. Uh, the people who want, want to volunteer step forward. And I saw my father, don't volunteer. So, so in, you know what those people did? They had 20 wheelbarrows, a broom, and a shovel. They had to police the whole area. And that was, uh, and, I, and I, took, I took my father's advice, and, and I, ne I never volunteered for anything at all. But uh, on the first day of week, I got in the, in, 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 uh, well, when the invasion came, we were in a boat, and uh, we, we were all down in a, in a hole. We were smoking, playing cards, whatever, and all of a sudden we heard a rat -ta 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 -ta, and boom, 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 and we all rushed up, up the gangplank. The gas, gas was in front of my captain, Captain Ariel Wilson III. He said, Lord, I hell you think you guys are going? He said, well, if you, if you don't want to get killed, you stay there. And we were there the whole day in the hole. But um, then we couldn't get on the beach because the artillery need, needed room. Uh, our guns were in the hole. They had to take the guns and put, put, put them on the truck. We rode the truck. That's where, where I was lucky. I could walk. I rode. And um, so we got in position. It was late. Uh, oh, I don't know. It must have been about 5 or 6 o'clock. And, and we got into the beach. We got our position. 
And uh, I'll never forget this. Uh, I had a, a, a major, uh, Bob Jones. Well, I don't think, I think he was five, five feet tall. But we know him name by name. He says, uh, he says, uh, uh, oh, in, in the meantime, there was a special troop that took that the air, uh, the, uh, the, one, the 101 troopers out of the apple trees because they didn't have a chance. Uh, uh, the Germans just took back, 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 and, and they were in the tank at the, the airport. Uh, uh, and they were taking them uh, off the trees, and it was a, it was an awful sight. It was. It was an awful sight. These poor guys, and, and we saw the, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the gliders that they came, they were all smashed. They were all smashed. They, uh, I have them, they didn't even have a chance. That was the 101st uh, Airborne. 101st and uh, 82nd Airborne. Uh, so we got in position in, in this, um, in this major who says, uh, he says, uh, Bonner Christie, yes sir. He, uh, he said there's a lot of Germans around, he's still here yet. He said you better, I'll tell you, he didn't have to say this, it's the third word with the three of us. Boy, you, uh, uh, you think of both those to, to, to the dirt, and we had these small shovels, and uh, we 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 dug the whole three of us, and, and, and they give us each uh, a 50 caliber machine gun, and he says, stay low, anybody moves around, don't worry, give it to them, but actually, thank God there, was a, uh, there wasn't anybody there around, and uh, but that that was my first experience. And then we had to go through, through the uh, the hedge road. That was mm. tough. That was tough. I'll tell you, that was tough. It, just like the stable, you, you couldn't get through. Let me say something. Sure. You know, while uh, you were getting off, we were in the, our Air Force, straightened 500 feet ahead of you. Whew. Talk about being scared. But boy, them boys knew where they were firing at. Well, anyway, we got to St. low. By the time we got to St. Louis, they were set up. Man, they blew that place all the hell. And when we when we got there, we were trying to get across this minefield. We couldn't get across. We had guys with Geiger counters trying to, in the middle of the field, we had a, an officer, I don't know what it was, he was a German up there, picking our guys off. Well, my CO says, hey, Bonnie, you think you can get him? I said, Captain, if he sticks his head up above that sill, I'll have him, because I was a sharpshooter, see. I had to stand in there. Well, it must have been an hour and a half, two hours. And finally, I seen that barrel come up, and I watched, and I watched. Then I seen the helmet come up, and I seen his eye come up, and phew, I got him right between the eyes. Then boom, all the way across we went. Well, that's the only way to get across. But in the meantime, after that, I was on guard at St. Lowe. Tell you something, it was coming out of here. I was scared. I'm in this thicket. Crouched down. Now, mind you, you couldn't see it was dark. And I'm sitting there, and I'm sitting all of a sudden here. My old ears went up. I said, what the hell was that? I look, I listen, I listen. I heard it rattle again. I said, uh oh, my time has come. In the meantime, I said, ho, ho, ho. I had a carbine. Boop, 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 boop. I shot the whole 15 shots into it. <laughs> my CO came running over. It's just starting to get daylight. Buddy, what's the matter? Well, I heard somebody rounded by our trucks or something. I fired into it. I ain't going to take no chance. That's all right. Forget it. I went over and I looked. Guess what I found? A dead cow with 15 shots right in the head. <laughs> I'm serious. So I went and got our, <coughs> our mess sergeant. He come over. I said, Joe, look, meet Joe, meet. Hmm. I said, what do you, how are we going to get it? Watch me. Look, I had a, I carried a knife down in here, one of those with a knuckle on it, sharp as a razor. I said, watch him. I slid it down the belly, cut his head off, pulled it off. I said, all right, Joe, cut him up. Took that one guts it in the meantime. We had to bury everything, see? We buried everything. <laughs> and we had meat for a week. But in the meantime, this farm was coming around. He couldn't find his cow. But <laughs> 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 well, bless you, Turn around. We're, we're, we're busting a gut. What are you going to do? 
And that was it. That's one of the good things that happened. And what else was it? I'm sorry, I have to stop and think. Okay. Uh, I had an uh, experiment. Oh, uh, it, it was um, it, it, it was plain awful. It was, it, it was just about getting dark. I had these Germans come over. Uh, they call him Bet Tech Charlie. Yeah. And uh, he came down, and, and uh, apparently it, it was light enough for for, uh, for, the, for them to see our column go up through the fourth position. And he he, he must have radioed in, and, and, and before I know it, there was one of those. Uh, strafing one, and I'll tell you, he came down through, and I don't know how he ever saw us, but he did, and he started strafing. The captain says, "Hit the dirt," so we jumped off the trucks and and we landed in ditches, and and we laid there, never said a word, nobody said anything, no cigarettes was lighted, nothing, and then it got dark, and every time I, I went like this. Uh, my something put the push your arm forward. I said, what the devil is that, you know? Didn't dare to move because it may have been a, a booby trap. We didn't know it. And come, come to find out, I, I landed right next to a, a dead cow. And of course, they get bloated. And every time I like that, the bullet would, would throw. And I, I, I don't, I don't you think that was scary? I'll tell you another thing. If anybody says they weren't scared, they're liars. They're liars. Well, one of my professors in graduate school was in France in World War II. Got into the chateau, got into the wine cellar. About four or five of the guys got drunk, and they were raising rabbits. <laughs> they opened the cages, put them together. I said, they don't know what happened after that, but there may have been more rabbits than anybody figured. Well, we uh, we were on uh, a C a C rack or K uh, one of those racks oh. anyway. Uh, we had the best thing we could have was our helmet. Our helmet was our bathtub, was our 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 cooking utensil, shaving, brushing our teeth, washing our hair, and washing our body. And those the helmets weighed about oh I say about seven eight ten pounds, and it just hold a gallon of water. So we had to wash our feet, our socks, wash everything else. And, wash, and, and we couldn't do it at night because we couldn't. Uh, uh, we would warm the water. We couldn't make a fire at night because due to the uh, the concentration, and we had to do it in the, in the early in the morning. You see, guys shaving and putting his to take the helmet for water, in, make coffee. Uh, we would warm up our, our food, whatever it was, and uh, it's a wonder that any of us got got out of there alive without any kind of a disease or anything, but um, uh, it was terrible. Oh, uh, <laughs> here's another one. Well, we, we were on the field, and uh, we were, well, AR our artillery didn't go through any towns. We were out in the field. We, we were backup. Uh, we, we, we had a combat team. We had to support them. Anytime they wanted artillery, we had to give it to them. Uh, we had good, good artillery. We had good, I, well, I had 19 months training. And uh, we, we go into a new position. And the Ford observers, oh, I felt sorry for that. More people got killed up there because the Germans didn't want the Ford observers up there. You get the high class, so we get uh, with, with the telescopic sites. We, uh, 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 we knew it was just where they were. They, and um, oh, they, uh, I had a, a major cap. Uh, uh, lieutenant Beck, he was the first lieutenant. That man got shot five times in his knees. And, and now he's home in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania, and he, he can't walk anymore. He's about 80, oh, I would say about 85, 80, 80, 80, 86 years old. But once in a while I go down and see him, which it, it, it isn't too too far from, from where I live. Well, anyway, we were going all this time without any fresh meat. We had this junk they called uh, uh, powdered milk. Mm. And I came from a village where we got our own milk. And, uh, uh, and, and, we, and, and, and uh, I happened to, to spot a cow out in the middle field. And uh, I says, uh, gee, my, my boy, I said, well, come on. I said, uh, I said, I know how to milk a cow. So we went down there. I said, you hold him by the head. And uh, and I'll pet him, and pretty soon 
I had a whole bucket full of milk, see? so we brought it to to our, uh, our, our, our 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 mess sergeant. They had to be uh, uh, had to be uh, boiled up to a certain point, so we wouldn't catch any anything. And uh, and he said, "Well, I have a for you tomorrow morning." Well, we went to get it the next morning. It was gone. I don't know how the officers found out about it, but they took every crop we had. The week, the week, the week could have killed them. But with that, that was another incident. It's uh, meat. We didn't have fresh meat. We wanted fresh meat, and the, and the, and the Frenchmen had a lot of beef out there. And uh, we went to with those farmers. Uh, we had a fellow that what well, spoke and understood French, and, and we wanted to buy a heifer. And he, he wouldn't give it to us. I said, we'll pay you for it. He wouldn't give it to us. And I said, look, I, 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 I told him, I interpreted, I said, look, tell this guy, I said, we're here to save your, this part of my life with your ass, and, and you won't even you, you give us a piece of meat. So uh, we offered to pay him. So we walked away. About an hour and a half or so later, uh, we got the heifer. We took it in, we butchered it, and we put everything underneath the ground so you wouldn't see it. And we had steaks for this is a three, four of all the feeding 109 men takes a lot of uh, and big eaters too. And this uh, Frenchman came and, and I said, uh, I, I'm, I'm missing a heifer. You are. We don't know nothing about it. So he, uh, here we are trying to save the heist from the Germans. And uh, I mean, he would give us some. Uh, I, 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 he had plenty of beef there, he could have given us. So we wanted to pay for it, very nice. And we all had Franks, you know, I don't know how much a Frank was. Uh, just a bunch of piece of paper. And, uh, and, and another time we went, uh, 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 we went forward. Uh, we were chasing our enemy quite fast. And we had to saddle down. And, uh, and uh, again, uh, we saw um, a, a cow out there, so we wanted fresh milk. I said, this time, we'll fool the officer. They don't want to know, we'll, we'll do it ourselves. So I, 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 he said, well, and, and it was a, a, there were a bunch of people. They were from the city, the country, the big cities, whatever, you know. They didn't know how to milk a cow. Then they, they didn't know how to milk a cow, and they asked me, how you milk a cow? I said, look. You you grab a tail, you go like that, see, and here I'm get getting the milk. He, right to this day, he didn't know what I was, uh, what it meant. See. He was pumping. He, he was pumping his tail back and forth. But um, I I really enjoyed uh, the army. I really enjoyed this. Uh, Marshall was on the. Uh, you've heard of the famous. Uh, Jewish concentration camps. Oh, Christ. He was in a liberation. Well, you going to say nothing about that. Birkow. Birkow. He might about talk it. about it, but it wasn't, wasn't a very pleasant sight. Well, it wasn't. But you did tell me yeah. that all the German soldiers were killed. Well, we were, we took this up by, uh, I think it was Czechoslovakia, Pat and Bogomol. And we'd come up to it, and some Germans were running, but others, you could smell the death. Yeah, but it hangs so. Could stand the smell. Well, anyway, we went in this place where all these furnaces were, and these Germans were still trying to put the people in there, grab my arm and throwing us throw them in. I had a BAR. I just turned on. Yes, uh, so you uh, can't hold a BAR strap down because you go up in the air. Excuse me, uh, maybe some of you folks don't know what a BAR, a Browning automatic. Bearing automatic, yeah. It's a. It's a. It's, it's a, 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 a twenty rounds. I believe was yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, like a, a, a brown a brown a brownie auto automatic. What, what caliber was it? 50? Uh, no, it was 30. 30. 30. A 30 caliber. Like yeah. a 30 off six. Yeah. For a 357. So all I done was instead of pulling like this because it can go up in the air, you can flip it over, you grab the clip, you press the trigger, and you just pull it back. And you're just it's just like mowing. Mowing them all down. <laughs> every every crowd we I'm sorry, every enemy we found, we killed them. That's nothing. Well, uh, well I'm now. sorry. Go ahead. There's times when we used to take a bunch of prisoners, and uh, these guys, the seals, and take them back to the cages. 
pages are 20 miles back. You'll be back here in 10 minutes. What are you going to do? So what we used to do was separate them. We tell them, drop all your hand grenades, anything, any ammunition, guns, drop everything right there. Well, the older ones did it. So the older people, they were maybe about over 30, 35, they went to we push them to one side. And the young ones, they, hey, they were 12 to 13 to 14 years old, mind you. What we've done, we separated them. We told the older one, go ahead, go on back to Germany. And the rest of us were standing right there. We had to shoot every one of them. That's a hell of a thing to do, I know. Kids, your ages, we had to kill them. Yes. And you should see the explosions. Because they have booby traps on them, they have duck, I don't know what it was. But when we killed them, that's when got, everything would go on. They said, be back here in 10 minutes. We were back in 10 minutes. No, it was, um, it was awful, I'll tell you. It it's is. hard to kill a young kid. But either, either kill them or he's going to kill you. So why not? Just one of those things. Uh, it's a shame. It's a, it was just a, a, a regular, well, you've probably seen, a, a, I have a satellite at home, what my brother has too, and we, we have the History Channel. And every time the World War II comes down, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. As I look, tears comes out. Sure. That's right. No, it, is that my buddy? Is that my buddy? Uh, and uh, you know, you're wide open, your tears are coming down, and uh, it's it just, it was just plain murder. It was just plain murder. But, but, but we held our, our up and we defeated them. Uh, I was just something else I was going to say. Uh, All right, think about it. All right, go ahead. All these girls, boys, have you ever heard of the Battle of the Bulge? Did you ever hear of it? That was out of Verviers, Belgium. It was in Malmody, where the Germans broke through. They were trying to hit our gas dump. Well, I'll tell you what, I was in a foxhole for three days. Nem crops were coming and we couldn't stop them. But guess what? The Americans are, for ingenuity, man, they're something else. You see them, well, right around, all the way around us, there was a lot of woods, and we know they had to cut to get, get across them. Up the tree they went, and someone stood behind the trees. The ones behind the trees, when the, when the tank went by, they had snow. Boom, hit them where, where they could see up and they couldn't see. And then the, one of our guys would get a bazooka, break the track, and the thing couldn't move. Then others, the ones who were in the trees, they had a bunch of, of uh, hand grenades on them. Well, they'd go up the tree, and when that tank came by, the hatch was open. You pull the pin out, you grab the hatch, and boy, you drop it, and you pull the hatch down. And you go, everybody was dead. And it was 20 degrees above zero. Yeah. Talk about it being cold. Yeah, the Battle of the Bulge, the, uh, you probably heard this, Paul, they called those soldiers, the American soldiers were caught in the Battle of the Bulge. They called them the battered bastards of the stone. And, uh, My brother here was the 90th. Yeah. 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 And this and is the 90th. Yeah. And this is what the 90th did. The, the, the 90th infantry division. It says here, um, the 90th had more days of combat than any other division in the European theater. The 90th had at least one unit in contact with the enemy every day from D-Day to V-E Day. The 90th included more than 35,000 men at one time or another, but not more than 14, and there were less than 4,000 of these left today. Uh, the 90th earned invasion Earlhead and all five battle stars from Normandy. Northern Fan, France, the Ardennes, the Battle of the Bulge, Rhineland, Central Europe, and also the French Crow, I can't pronounce it. The 90th killed 84,000 prisoners. 84,000 prisoners, 501 German tanks, 195 self propelled guns, 1,228 artillery pieces, 5,572 other German vehicles, 82 locomotives, 134 airplanes, and three steamboats. Who the hell kept, who the hell kept track of them? Well, we had uh, a computer going or what? No, 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 no. We had officers that took care of that. Uh, it, it kept, uh, the 90th crossed dozens of rivers, liberated hundreds of towns, several million people. The 90th liberated Walsenburg concentration camp and several prisoners of war camps, captured the marker salt mine intact with all the Germany store of gold and art treasures. 
The 90th Force, the surrender of the German 11th Panzer Division, that was the one at the day, mm -hmm. and met the Russians in Czechoslovakia. The, eight, the 90th suffered 15,000 battle wounds. The total number of men treated by medics to include all injuries, trench foot and frostbite was 25,988. The 90th was George S. Patton's uh, third, third army division. Force division. And um, he probably won't tell you about this, but I will. Because I mentioned here trench foot and frostbite. My brother here uh, was uh, was on a gun. This gun right here. He passed it around. And you should look at it. He is uh, the one aiming it, I guess. Here. Uh, yeah, the one without the, 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 the It was a picture taken by AP, appeared in all, all the newspapers in the United States. I think he fired the gun water three days straight. Oh, yeah. Months. Oh, yeah. Three and then at one point, point the gun blew up. The gun blew up. Ammunition. There were four guys on the gun. Only one whip. He's here. Uh, and then when they found you, he, uh, well, tell the story about your trench foot. Oh, you tell them about that. Uh, yeah, tell uh, what trench foot is. For, I'm going to give the kids know what trench foot is. The trench foot is, is, your, is your feet are more or less frostbitten. And and uh, and it and it, and it stirs all of the blood vessels in your feet, and your feet will swell up. Yeah, you know, which mine did. And if knuckles, you let it go, knuckles on on your toes, they get like this. Because uh, I had it. Uh, uh, because the vessels are are um, are uh, they're so small. Uh, they're they small do. and they're um, they're very fragile. And if you don't get blood in your toes. Your ankles, and you get dry, the gangrene sets in on you, and if you, if you don't catch it in time, I, I was in a hospital, and I saw young men like you, uh, with feet just as black as the ace of spades. They had to cut them off at the ankles. And had, and they go in the operating room, they come back with two stumps, and that was tough. That was tough. Uh, in my case. Um, uh, we were installed at Metz for about three or four weeks. We couldn't get any ammunition. They gave us only four shells uh, for, a, for a gun. And we uh, and, and our shells were, were, were 33 inches long with an armored Paris uh, fuse, a set fuse, and, uh, and, and they weighed about 30, 30, 35 pounds. So we had uh, nine men. Plus the sergeant, he was on the telephone. Uh, they, they, uh, there were people that were uncreated and came by, by, the, by the, uh, the, 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 the time they got to me, uh, the number two man would have that in his hand and he would automatically throw it in. And he should tell Leonard, I said, make sure you hit the hole because if you don't, we're gone. And, uh, and I, I had, uh, I was the, um, uh, I was the gunner on that, on that, uh, on that, you were better. I, I was, uh, I had the elevator up or down, and another fellow mm -hmm. had another buddy that had uh, the drivers to east and west. And, um, and anyway, it was tough. It was tough. Uh, um, one thing I know, the Germans had a better sight than we did. Mm -hmm. They, uh, they had a much better sight. Uh, if uh, order come down through, a fire mission come down through, up 200, we had to put up 200, a lot of like, level of bubble, and uh, and uh, I say ready, fire, and I did uh, I, 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 I would pull the yeah, lanyard to uh, to fire, and then they jumped down, up and down, and then they, uh, they, uh, maybe we were short, up 200. And you had to start from 300. You had to think 200. And this is so much. But the but the Germans had their sights that every time they shot, they started with a zero. And they started, uh, and um, uh, that was that was quite handy. Uh, uh, they had a, a better uh, a, a better sight than than, than we had. It, it, it was tough. It was tough. Uh, oh, I was talking about. Uh, uh, we were stuck up at uh, at uh, at, uh, at Metz. We couldn't get uh, uh, we couldn't get through Metz. We couldn't uh, uh, we just just couldn't crack it. Uh, uh, what we what we finally did, and I had I had about three feet of concrete enforced with steel, and I'll tell you, <laughs> it, it takes more than a bomb to, to take that. 
But the, but we finally uh, broke broke through. In, in, in the meantime, it was raining. It was cold. Uh, this, this was the latter part of uh, the first part of uh, October, I think it was. And it rained. It rained. It rained. We didn't have any overshoes. We didn't have any raincoats. We didn't have any gloves. No. And, and the feet were getting cold. And the, uh, pe uh, people would tell us now, why? What is it to change your socks? Hmm. I said, how'd you like to sit there? And the, uh, uh, the enemy is shooting at you, and, and, and you can ch ch change your socks. And, uh, and they couldn't answer me. They couldn't answer me because it's just soon you, you put your foot in your in your shoe to be what anyway. But uh, I, 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 I I was in a mess, and then we finally broke through, and then we swung around. Uh, and then we crossed the Moser River, but that was another another one. Uh, uh, our engineers worked their butts off to, to put a bridge. The more we uh, we put bridges, the the, uh, the Germans would knock it over. But 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 we finally did get the bridge over. Now, look, what happened to us on the Rhine River? Our engineers are trying to put these pontoons across. We get about halfway across, boom, they're our children and knock them out. We got a whole battalion of us now, 20 degrees above zero. It was cold. We had to swim a quarter of a mile across there, fully clothed, with a field pack on your back, and you rifle up in the hand like this, trying to get the hell across, and trying to hurry up. It, we were freezing. We lost, oh, I say half the battalion on there. I was just one of the lucky ones. And I jumped up there, I started jumping around. Trying to warm myself up. Five, ten minutes. Don't worry, Jay. Any questions? Sure, it's all right. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Then they had the Zigfield line. The Zigfield line was a bunch of barriers, concrete buried about 10, 20 foot down. They came to a point, like a pyramid. And they were set in such a way that tanks couldn't maneuver around it. But we sat there for three days, couldn't get across. We had some smart engineers, I'll tell you. They had them tanks, they got tanks, bulldozers on them. Where they got them, first thing you know, late at night we hear, the hell's going on? Here comes these tanks, pushing dirt, pushing dirt. All the way, over the top we went. That's the only way we get there. But I'll tell you, I was half frozen to death. I was going to tell you, you talk about frozen feet. I have frozen feet in the Battle of the Bulge. They took me to the hospital in Beverly Hills, Belgium. He looked at my feet and the doctor says, soldier, them feet got to come off. I looked at him. I said, what? He said, they got to come off. I said, no, they don't. He says, who's the boss? I had the 38 in the shoulder holster. I pulled that thing out. I put through one in there. I said, here's the boss right here. He said, what do you want? I says, all I want is a little sympathy for the first, for the first for the time being. And then massage my feet. See what happens. Give me about a week or two. If they get any worse, fine. Cut them off. In the meantime, here come the MPs after me. And I had that old hammer back. I said, well, you guys tired of living? I said, I'll get you before you get me. Because I said, mine's already cocked. You're still in the holster. That's when I told the doctor what I wanted. He let me have my time. Sure enough, on the sixth day, the big toe on his foot, you could feel a little sensation in there. You could pinch it and you could feel it. And the next day, the other one went. And that's how I saved my feet. But my toes were like this. I my metatarsal I... arch was gone. And do you know that this day, the government wouldn't pay me, wouldn't help me, wouldn't pay for me? I, I can attest for his stubbornness and tenacity. He was shot. I, I mean, I know him. He's not telling you, he's not stretching. He would have done it. Uh, how did you get that 38 pistol? That's the pistol I took off the guy St. Lowe. German. Yeah. German. German. I took the pistol off the from St. Louis. I still have the pistol home. I, I wish I had it here. I could yeah. show you the permit that, that the government gave me to bring it home. I still have eight rounds of actual ammunition that are 55 years old, home in a box. And I have the pistol home. I still have a permit. I have a permit to carry it. But who wants to carry something like that? I don't want to carry it. I just want a permit to keep it in the house. I just want one question. If any of you run into the Nisei Battalion over there, what? Japanese Americans. No, 
No, no, no. no. Because they, they, they were there. Yeah, you know, there. I just wondered, there. you know. The only no. ones I heard of was the, the Navajo Indians. Well, well, they, they were in the Pacific. Yeah. They were trying to break the code. The Japanese were trying to break the code, and they brought these Navajo Indians. And, you know, Navajo language has no uh, that alphabet. Well, they went out there, and then the Japanese were trying to figure it out. And, you know, we were going, they were going right on through them. I couldn't understand him. You know? I, um, I, I praised the boy that brought stuff for us. Uh, it was, um, uh, we, we had a battalion of uh, uh, African Americans. Thank you, guys. Uh, they He's came right. up and they brought, 24 hours, they brought stuff for us. And, and they were really great. Their trucks, believe me, believe this. A little slits like this on the headlights, like a pinpoint. And they travel 45, 50 mile an hour down the road, just two headlights like that. No other markings on them. I don't know how the hell they done it. They done it though. I red, drove. I, they, I they drove. Call it the red ball express. <laughs> no, they, they wouldn't let. They wouldn't let the black troops into combat. Right. 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 So you, but you, you guys did a beautiful job. They did. Yeah. But what what we call them? The Red Ball Express. Red, Express. Red Ball Express. Express. That's what you. Yeah. You did a wonderful job. <laughs> yeah, you did a you did a, a great job. I think we ought to cut this. Uh, uh, any uh, questions? One, one, one more thing. Okay. Uh, the way I found that I had frozen feet uh, the night before we had uh, some kind of a red meat. I don't know it was meat and vegetable hash. I forgot what the what the meat. It looked like the horse meat to me. But I woke up in the morning, I had, I had pain on my stomach. I said, Sarge, I don't feel too well. I got a stomach. What did you eat last night? Well, we ate that. Okay. I, he said, okay, buddy, go go over to Dick. And he, uh, he from Rochester, and we're just like that. And uh, uh, I says, Dick, I said, I don't feel good. He said, never mind. He said, take take your shoes off. Well, what, the, what the hell you want my shoes off for? I got stomach ache. Never mind. He said, you take your shoes off. And I took my shoes off, and he took a needle and went all the way around. Do you feel this? Feel this? No. He saved my feet. And it was stretch feet, that's what it was. And I was at hospital from uh, November, uh, uh, from November the 13th to Ju uh, 1944 to July. I had it written down here. Uh, from November the 12th, 1944 to July of 1945, I spent all that time in the hospital to get the rid the rig of it, and uh, it, it was tough. It was tough. You couldn't walk on them, and you couldn't even put a, a piece of a thing like that on your toes. They had to have a sort of a, a, a they made a sort of a, a box a, like a, like so, and, and our feet were in here, and the sheets. It, it hurt. I'll tell you, it hurt. But uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed well, it. Let me tell them something else now. I'll just sort of brief it all up. We, uh, between Stalin, Churchill, and Truman, we sat on the outskirts of Berlin, mind you now, 20 degrees below zero, sitting there waiting. You know what we were waiting for? For the Russians to come in to take it. We just sat there. They were shooting and we couldn't move. We couldn't shoot, but they oh. said, don't fire back, don't fire back. You know, I guess... We had the artillery. We could have we went through Berlin. We could have cleaned that place right out. No problem. But that's I, what happened there. You know, I could stay here for three hours. I could stay here all night. You can't. But, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I've got to go to work tonight, too. <laughs> I, well, I have a picture here that I'll want I just passed it around. Oh. Oh, did you? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, you see the braids on our hats? Now, those two fellows uh, were from, from Caledonia. Uh, one died of a heart attack, and they, the other one had a stroke. Now, uh, uh, well, you'll see me with a red braid. That meant artillery, red. And the blue was the infantry. And the orange was uh, signal sort. And the officers had sort of gold braids. And they were officers, and, and, uh, and that's how we could we could tell that who was where. The, and now, uh, oh, 
uh, they wouldn't let us take any pictures of our guns. But, but I did manage, 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 manage to sneak that in. That I I'll let you come up here and look at it then. Do you have any questions? You got any questions? If we can answer them, we'll do our best. Try. Hey, buddy. Yes. You don't mind? No, I know. Did you, did you find when you came home that there were really no obstacles here to life? You know what I mean? Because you had been through so much that this isn't going to stop me. Kind of attitude. Right, right. Yeah. It, it, it was more or less a challenge. It was a challenge, yes. Yeah. It didn't bother me a bit. I just fell into it. I got married and that was it. But, uh. <laughs> I was going back and forth from California uh, I, into Wilmington. Back and forth. Three times. My father law says, hey, Leo. I can't say it in Italian. You wouldn't understand. Say it in Italian. I would interpret it. To me, to my, my uh, feeling, tell me, uh, about, about back in the in other words, he said, either marry my daughter or get the hell back to Caledonia. <laughs> <laughs> that was in November. I come into home November the 15th. I met my wife twice before I went overseas, but we corresponded back and forth, see? And uh, we married. I've been together 55 years. Let me tell you a story how he met his wife. <laughs> oh. You'll enjoy this. Uh, he went with a friend to her to first cousin. First cousin to her house. Now they're all sitting around speaking Italian. Now my brother doesn't know what my wife is Italian. Before I was being born in Rome, Italy. And they were talking about him, what a good looking man he was, and someone ought to hook on to him. And he's sitting there. Yeah, this goes Taking it all late because he was well, this was, uh, Joe Pelaya, he was in Turner Revenue. See? <laughs> I met his wife. He was uh, talking, 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 and they told him, look, he don't understand that down, he's Jewish. I'm just sad there, you know? <laughs> hey, I'm playing the part, you know, Finally, I couldn't take him out. I said, hey, well, yo, stop talking about bodily. Be he careful what you say. He like locked the door, he went, he said, be uh, careful what you say. I, that's all I said. I, I have a, uh, another thing is that uh, every, every year we have a, a, a reunion. And uh, we go to all, we, oh, I've been in Nebraska, Indiana, and stuff like that. Last year we were in, uh, uh, well, this, uh, last year we, we, we were at the high regency in Indianapolis, in Indiana, and the brochure came out. Uh, these are our base, our left since our last reunion. One year we lost 173 veterans. Of course, there are, up in, uh, some of us are, are, there are well, I'm not my 80s yet, but, but uh, there's a lot of them. There are. We ain't far from it. Oh, well, we're not too <laughs> far from it. There are a thousand World War II veterans dying. See what I'm carrying now? With a wobble, I got to use something. Here's the, here's the, here's the, I thought that was just to beat him off. <laughs> this, 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 I was this at a football the, game. I went, we went to get a cup of coffee. I had my nephew with him. He couldn't get him apart. I said, hey. Get back of me. I took this game. Hey, boys, let me buy it. Let me buy it. Man, that thing, they opened up like that. Up here was a little. Oh, Skip. Skip. Skip, Skip was there laughing. He was laughing back up. I'll, I'll go Skip for, I've known Skip for my wife teaches with him at the middle school, so I've known Skip for a long time. Uh, this was uh, our divisional. Uh, the night I don't hate our artillery badge. But home, I have a picture. I mean, I have the, the real. Swastika flag that came off of Boogum Ball. The prisoner was here. I had, that's the only thing I brought home. I brought a rifle home, I brought a pistol home. Then I had some. They invaded. Did you ever hear the invasion money? I yeah, my Lord. See, I didn't know. My Lord was coming up. I could have brought some of that stuff. That's okay. All it says down there, I love you. I love you. What will those bring you back? <laughs> uh, this past year we went to uh, uh, to Charlotte, North Carolina for our reunion and the mayor of the city of uh, Charlotte, uh, uh, did you ever hear it? Was that with the uh, the tea or the with uh, with the uh, spearhead and five the battle started. And I thought it was quite wonderful. It was a battle uh, quite wonderful to walk along. I guess now you can see what Tom broke off that when he read the greatest uh, story. Can you stay here and support him? Can you stay here and support him? Can you stay here and support him? Can you stay here for another 20, 40 minutes to go out class on Friday?
I don't know about the other people if they want to stay. Well, like I said, I'll stay for another 40 minutes if I don't have class on Friday. Oh, looks like we're, we're sort of out of luck. Oh, we've got oh, sure. sure. hey, You're going to take. You can hang around a few minutes and talk to them personally. They're more fun to talk to one-on-one. -on -one. They may even tell you about some of the recreational activities and things. PhD. He's a chemist. You get all the education you can get. Because they, they, can't, they, they may take your the dignity away from you, but they can't take your education. Get as much as possible all the education you can get because you're going to need it. You're going to need it. I have, and, and I'm proud of all you people. I have two sons and a daughter. My oldest daughter it's like a legal secretary for the, almost the president of MBNA. That's the biggest bank there is. You've heard of the MBNA, haven't you? My son Marshall, he's the first vice president of the same bank. And my son Paul, when he got out of school, he said, I'm not college material. I kept asking him. He said, no, I'm not college material. Do you know what the, he went back to school now? He was 40-some years old. You know what he's going to be? A psychiatrist. There you are. That's what I mean by get your education now. Get it now that you're young. Right now, he's struggling because he's married, got two kids. Well, I went back to school and I, I got my GED. In three months' time, I had my GED. Well, thanks a lot, Jeff. Thanks a million. Wait a minute. I will, I will give Larry two copies of the video tape. Okay. Yeah. I'll see you. That's Monday. Thanks a lot. Are you okay, guys. Take care. Unless you're going to stay here and talk to these two guys. Then I'll let you go. Do you have a question right there? Thank you very much. How many pictures did you take? This was our right. Oh, my God. 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 Uh, uh, we, we came from uh, the port from Kent Gilmer to, uh, to uh, the Lever Point in the middle. Yeah. And we uh, well, was one of real key uh, uh, maneuvered our way up into Scotland. And, and here was our route that we took. It was called Operation. What's the name of the second thing? It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Uh, uh, He's a puzzle one. Sandy colored hair, ruddy complexion. 
Bill all the time. Uh, we're no, no, the we're no, 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 we're no, 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 the Confederate soldiers came up the hill, the, you know, they're all firing yeah. blanks. And they get about halfway up the hill, both sides threw their arms down and went and embraced one another. I have a video of uh, Sid Sherwood. Did you know Sid? No. He was a short section here in Batavia. He was on the battleship Oklahoma when it was sunk oh. at Pearl Harbor. No. So and they. They had uh, a story about it. Telling me. one of the pilots that he sure thinks was actually there. one that had dropped the torpedo because he saw him <coughs> come over the ship. And they asked him if he would be willing to meet with this man if they could, you know. He said, yes. He said, don't you hate him? He said, no. He said, the man was doing the job he was assigned to do. He said, if I were in Japan, I would have been expected to do the same thing, or in Germany, I would have expected to do the same thing. all came out. United States, anybody marrying old people, soldiers, they were an American citizen. They, they went through hell. But a father, but there is no, married no, mother, no animosity afterwards. Yes, that made her automatic. No, the war was terrible. That made us automatic. But there's no lasting state. type of situation. No, no, no we don't have Plus, any, have any discharge animosity discharge. at all. No, they were beautiful people. See, In fact, uh, 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 are any uh, aircraft. Uh, Shot a plane down. Ben, ben Check Charlie. He used to, and he got down too low in our any aircraft, and they were mangled. But they were beautiful. I'm up here trying to get a hold of myself. I'm sorry. Worse now. I have a video which I will show right on the Nisei Battalion, the Japanese Americans who fought, and it goes into what. We did to, to Japanese Americans here, which was absolutely horrendous. This is probably one of the lowest points in American history. Right, absolutely. I agree with you 100%. And, you know, uh, well, you know, when the war broke down, with my father being an immigrant, but my father had fought in World War I on the American side, they wanted to arrest him because he was on the radio at short wave and he didn't like to listen to Italian music. And they thought he was sending messages. Uh, they, he had a shotgun. They wanted to take shotgun away from him. See, all these people downtown, who I still don't like, because they were prejudiced then, and, and they still are prejudiced today. We, we did a videotape about 25 years ago with Ted Ashizawa. Ted was in the internment camps. And we did a follow-up about 10 years later, and He's They're erased my original one. I'm talking to him. They said, I, I authorized it. I said, you've got to be kidding me. You, got to you must be a foreign exchange student from Japan. So, <laughs> or about in Japan. Holes in it. And I could see right away. Oh my God. Well, we have a lot of they have material a about like a to, to tell the experience about it. It's, uh, it's a diamond. Oh, the uh, spearhead and five battle stars. Probably three weeks he'd done his other. In many cases, we don't yeah, communicate. Well, yeah, this was 2020. Yeah, you know, we don't communicate. You know, the words that the Japanese felt. And then right. Now, what is it? Post the words. Look what's going on in the Middle East right now. They can I, I read, see something like this. We we the took bigger all letters, the Japanese Americans. Anything smaller than that on the West Coast. You know, you go down at five. And put them all in the camps. They took the German Americans and Please. put them in the camps too. Here, oh, some of them, but not nowhere near. Not nowhere near the near the Jap. Right, right. The Japanese Americans were so obsessed with what had happened at Pearl Harbor. Wow. Uh, they not right here, nothing. They wanted to form a suicide battalion. No, they used the laser when they broke the ship. They used the laser. The Japanese because they were pulling out. I'm so embarrassed by what had happened. They ended up with the FYI yeah, for what, 4 they, they, they went to like, Europe. Oh, yeah. in there. Uh, wow. There were 4,500 men in the battalion. There were 12,500 Purple Hearts. Really? Which means everybody was going to be about 300. Now, oh, 
Fernando, yes. But the, the thing that we have a problem with <laughs> is that we don't understand they each did. other. What they've done we're all, me, we're all my people. Name was you're, you're no different than I am. Other than you're the still here, but I mean, you know, as a person, you're not.